So you wonder, why would anybody want to have this role <laughs> with this person? <laughs> well, caretakers will connect with these emotional manipulators. They're a unique group of people. Uh, they need to feel needed and indispensable. And certainly they will be in this relationship. They also, much of the time, have been raised in a family with a parent who is a borderline or a narcissist. And this relationship seems familiar. And we know oftentimes when we meet somebody and it just feels like we know them, it almost triggers those endorphins to come up and say, wow, this is one of my people. And so when we recognize even uh, a person who uh, resembles a parent who we had a lot of trouble with, the, the, the caretaker starts thinking, wow, this is a person I really can love. And I, I was never able to really save my mother or my father, but I could save this person. We could, I could really show them how much I love them. And then they're going to heal and we'll have the most wonderful relationship. So there's a lot of fantasy going on here that is triggered by those uh, reactive emotions. Um, caretakers are overly compliant, forgiving, and accepting. So when the borderline or the narcissist suddenly wants to do something, they'll go, oh, okay, well, that's fine, and off they go. And now, you know, that's really nice for a while, um, but eventually even caretakers go, how come we never do anything I want to do? Um, caretakers tend to have low expectations of relationships. They don't expect the relationship to provide very much. Uh, and again, that's typically because the relationships they've been in the past often didn't. On the other hand, if they've been in a healthy family and the relationships were really uh, accommodating and responsive and everybody act that way, then they can feel, uh, they can be tricked into uh, a relationship, especially with a narcissist who appears to be offering that at the beginning. Uh, caretakers tend to have high levels of fear, obligation, and guilt. Um, caretakers sometimes make the commitment to be in this relationship on the second or third date. Which also explains why narcissists who sometimes propose on the second or third date make perfect sense to them. <laughs> because they're already thinking along those lines. Um, caretakers tend to have a mixed self-esteem. Part of their self-esteem is very high. They feel competent, they feel strong. Um, they usually are functioning very well in the work world. They have friends, they have activities. Um, caretakers who are not married typically have plenty of money. They are very uh, smart with how they handle their life. They actually do very well on their own, but they hate being alone. So uh, they look for a relationship. Uh, on the other hand, what is underneath that sometimes is this low level, you're not good enough, you're not smart, um, you, you, did, you made a mistake over there. They're very perfectionistic of themselves, not so much of other people, but of themselves. So uh, that negative self-esteem is somewhat similar to the way the borderline and the narcissist also feel. It, it, it uh, engenders a sense of neediness and I have to get somebody who will accept me even with that negative stuff. And caretakers have a high need to help others and certainly borderlines and narcissists fit the bill for that. <laughs>